Do you give people time to change for the better? Good morning, everyone. This is a reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. Iris Blue grew up in Houston, Texas. She lived a rebellious life and got involved in drugs, alcohol, and prostitution when she was a teenager. When she was 17, she was arrested and spent seven years in prison. When she got out of prison, she went back to the streets. She was part of the Banditos Motorcycle Gang, addicted to heroin, and had numerous abortions. As she grew older, she graduated from being a prostitute to being a pimp. Her office was a topless bar in sleazy part of Houston. One of her former clients became a Christian. He was radically transformed and started witnessing to Iris and others who were still in that destructive lifestyle. He visited Iris at the bar and told her she needed Jesus. She cussed him out. He called her up and told her how much God loved her and Iris hung up on him. One day he called and asked her to meet him outside the bar. That night he told her he couldn't see her anymore because he had made a commitment to God that he wasn't going to hang around with tramps anymore. Let me pick up the story at this point in Iris's own words. When he called me a tramp, I wanted to cut his throat. I thought, all this week you've been calling me and telling me how precious I am to God and that I was valuable. And now in one word, I was garbage. But before I could strike back, he said, you don't even understand, Jesus can turn you into a lady. When he said the word lady, it was like something that just exploded inside me. And I thought, all I've ever wanted to be was a lady. He said, you see, it's really like a marriage. It's not just believing. Because if just believing in Jesus would save you, you would have been saved when you first heard about Jesus. But it's a commitment of your life to him, saying, I give you me. It's not just a one-way street. Jesus gets all of you and you get all of him. Are you ready? I said, I'm ready. He said, okay, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, kind of like a wedding. And he said, Jesus, do you want her? I didn't hear anything, but he said, Jesus said, I do. And then he said, Iris, do you want Jesus? And I said, I do. We knelt there on the sidewalk. I could feel the music on my knees. He said, pray with me. Then he took my hand and led me in that prayer. It was like God pulled back a curtain on my heart. Out in front of an old bar, I knelt down a tramp, a loser, and a zero, and I stood up a lady, clean, pure, forgiven, innocent, blameless, cherished, brand new. My life was different. Iris Blue trusted Christ that night and since then has lived for the Lord. She lives in Murchison, Texas with her husband, Duane, and they serve the Lord full time. Her testimony has been put into a book entitled, Iris, Trophy of Grace. Can God still save prostitutes and tax collectors? Absolutely. But Iris thanks God every day that someone loved her enough to be willing to come down to the bar and share God's message of hope and forgiveness with an outcast. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus gives us a parable of two sons, one who refuses initially to heed his father's directive to work in the vineyard, but later changes his mind. The other says yes, but did not go. We can respond to certain situations in an inappropriate way from hindsight but time is a great gift. Like the first son, we just need time to come around. For instance, we always have heard of the teaching on forgiveness, but some of us cannot outrightly forgive. We need time to process our hurt and pain. We need to constantly pray for the grace to forgive. Another example, many of us are drawn to impulsive buying. This tendency results in waste of money when we are unable to utilize what we have bought. Either it stays in the pantry or in the cabinet until one day we discover it, already expired or past its usable time, 
or we have bought too many of them already. We may not fully comprehend the best response to any situation straight away. We may need time to think. Jesus tells us that God gives His people time. He does not rush us, but waits for us. When the Samaritan said no to him in Luke's gospel, things may have stayed that way. But in the Acts of the Apostles, they would eventually say yes, prodded by Jesus' followers. We are called to give each other time, and we need to pray for each other that we are able to utilize the time since we have said yes to God and to commit ourselves fully in faith that our God will make things right in time. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, help me not to judge people outrightly, but help me to accompany them in prayer and in action. For I know that as you change them, you will also change me for the better. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.